day, everyone, and welcome to St. Matthew's Evangelical Lutheran Church in Hanover, Ontario. I'm Pastor John Polichok, and it is wonderful to have you with us this morning on this fourth Sunday in the season of Pentecost. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Now we are in the storm, the boat almost swamped. But Jesus is here now. And when we call him, he will calm the storm. Even in the wind, in the waves, they listen to him as they would to their creator. We also listen to him and are called to believe in the power of God's word in him, a power greater than all that we fear. Here now our call to worship. God loves us with a steadfast love. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. God loves us so much he gave us his son. Let us believe and have eternal life. God loves us with a great love, rich in mercy. Let us have faith to receive this grace. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. This morning and throughout the summer, we will be using Holy Communion setting 10. And we continue now with our gathering hymn, it's number 761, Evening and Morning, and we'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 4. are your works rich in glory divine times without number awake or in slumber your eye observes us from danger preserves us causing your mercy upon us to shine Gracious Lord, hear me, pardon and spare me. Calm all my terrors, blot out my errors, that justified in your sight I may stand. Order my goings, direct all my doings. Guard me and guide me and stay close beside me. All I commit to your fatherly hand. To God in heaven all praise be given. O oh God, we offer and gladly proffer gifts from your hand. These alone you will prize. Hearts that receive you and faith to believe you. Hymns that adore you are precious before you. And to your throne, like sweet incense, arise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I invite you to join me now in singing our Kyrie, found in setting 8 on page 184. Kyrie eleison, 
on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. For peace in the world, for the health of the church, for the unity of all. For this holy house, for all who worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. That we may live out your impassioned response to the hungry and the poor. That we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. For peace in our hearts, for peace in our homes, for friends and family, for life and for love, for our work and our play, let us pray to the Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. For your spirit to guide that you center our lives in the water and the word. That you nourish our souls with your body and blood let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. I invite you to join with me now in singing our hymn of praise. It's Come Let Us Join Our Cheerful Songs, found on page 204. Come let us join our cheerful songs with angels round the throne. Ten thousand thousand are their tongues, but all their joys are one. Worthy the Lamb that died, they cry, to be exalted thus. Worthy the Lamb, our lips reply, for he was slain for us. Jesus is worthy to receive honor and power divine. And blessings more than we can give, be Lord forever thine. Let all creation join in one to bless the sacred name of God who sits upon the throne and to adore the Lamb. Let us pray. O God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine 
in storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us. And by your hand, protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time, I ask that you prepare your hearts and your minds to hear the Word of God. Our first reading today comes to us from the Old Testament book of Job. Job chapter 38, verses 1 to 11. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment, in thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther. And here shall your proud waves be stopped. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 107, verses 1 to 3 and 23 to 32. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God redeemed them from the hand of the foe, gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north, and from the south. Some went down to the sea in ships, plying their trade in deep waters. They beheld the works of the Lord, God's wonderful works in the deep. Then God spoke, and a stormy wind arose, which tossed high the waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and descended to the depths, their souls melted away in their peril. They staggered and reeled like drunkards, and all their skill was of no avail. Then, in their trouble, they cried to the Lord, and you delivered them from their distress. You stilled the storm to a whisper and silenced the waves of the sea. Then were they glad when it grew calm, when you guided them to the harbor they desired. Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all people. Let them exalt you in the assembly of the people. In the council of the elders, let them sing. Hallelujah. Here ends the psalm. Our second reading comes to us from the Apostle Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth, the sixth chapter, verses 1 to 13. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain, for he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day 
of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true as unknown and yet are well known, as dying. And see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you Corinthians, our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join with me now in singing our gospel acclamation found on page 205, the Alleluia. Alleluia, Lord and Savior, open now your saving word. Let it burn like fire within us, speak until our hearts are stirred. Alleluia, Lord, we sing for the good news that you bring. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the fourth chapter. Glory to you. O Lord. When evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose. And the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe, and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace from God our Father, from our living Lord Jesus the Christ, and from the Spirit of God who lives within us so that Christ may be known through us. Amen. Let us go across 
to the other side, Jesus says. Why? What was over there on that dark shore with those menacing black clouds? Why do we have to go to the other side when there's a storm brewing? But is it just about the storm? Or is there something on the other side that has us spooked? Could over there be where your worst fears live? The people you don't like? The conversations you'd rather avoid? The places you really don't want to go? Is that what's over there? On the other side? The author of Mark's Gospel starts this story with when evening had come. You see, there's always a growing darkness in these kinds of stories. When evening had come, he said to them, let's go across to the other side. If this were a screenplay instead of scripture, he might have said, Let's go into the cellar of this old house. Let's check out this abandoned hospital. Let's head toward that dilapidated cabin in the woods. And one of the disciples would turn to the camera and say, You know, I've got a really bad feeling about this. Maybe one of them did. Just before they stepped onto the boat because they knew what was on the other side or they thought they did. Gigantic Philistines are over there, mad kings, Gentiles, people possessed with legions of demons. Anyone and everyone who doesn't like them and everyone they don't like. The others are over there, on the other side. Mark is writing for a community grappling with how to include those who are different, those who have historically been enemies, those looked upon as, as sinners, as outsiders, as dangerous. Mark's community is wrestling with questions like, if Gentiles come into this mostly Jewish community, do they have to be circumcised? Do we all have to follow the same dietary laws? How do we accept someone into this community if they don't read Scripture the same way we do? How do we accept someone who looks different? Someone who speaks another language. Who doesn't fit our boxes of, of gender, race, or class. How do we live with these others in our midst? So especially if they have a different understanding of how we do things. What if they are, are fearful and violent and want to do us harm? Mark's community is in the midst of a voyage into this dark, fearful, and uncharted territory. Sound familiar? It's a journey that is always chaotic. How do we live alongside the others in our community? Do we change them? Or do they change us? It's a crossing that is never easy, but we make it many, many times in our life. Every crossing feels like sailing in the dark. With all the changes around us, just think of the pandemic. We are sailing in the midst of a storm. How do we cope when the structures and institutions we've always relied on to support us can no longer be counted on. When so many of them are visibly shaking under the strain of so much change. 
What do we do when our life situation changes, when the wind shifts and the seas rage and the resources, the money, the people, the time that we've come to rely on are no longer there? What do we do then? What do we do when the weapons of terror and hate are raised against our brothers and sisters? Teacher, don't you care that we are perishing? Jesus makes this sea crossing to the other side with the disciples twice in Mark. Both times are at night. Both times there is a storm. This time, Jesus goes with them and sleeps in the stern. The next time, he will make them get in the boats by themselves and go on without him. When they get in trouble, he will walk to them in the midst of the storm. Each time, he gets a little more impatient with them for simply expecting that he will perform a divine act and relieve them of their fear. <clears throat> Mark seems to be telling us that we have to do some work. That we are to learn that we are to learn how to respond faithfully in these situations rather than simply reacting out of fear. We are to find the strength and some kind of inner calm that will allow us to endure and even grow through these storms. Through faith. Through the faith, the trust that Christ is here with us in the boat. Christ is with all who suffer. Christ is the peace and the strength and the calm that we draw on. We need to continually seek that inner calm, that courage, because Jesus will keep calling us to go to that other shore. What or who is on the other side for you? What are your deepest fears? We all have them. There are all kinds of other sides. For the young, growing up and becoming an adult is an other side. For those who are older, retirement is an other side. What will I do? Who will I be if I'm not working? The other side might be getting married or getting divorced, facing an operation, or saying goodbye. For the many who are well off, poverty can be the other side. The lived experience of our indigenous peoples or people of color are the other side for many North Americans. The lived experience of so many on the margins is the other side for many others. For all of us, the other side is ultimately death. We all have other sides. Places that we don't want to go. Yet that's where Jesus invites us to go. That's where Jesus wants us to go. That's where Jesus is taking us to the other side into that foreign territory, to that place we'd rather not go, wherever those others are. Jesus wants us to go there. But not because it's our job to change them. Jesus doesn't insist on a night voyage on a stormy sea to make an impact on the ones who live across the sea. He does it to change the ones making the voyage. He does it to change the disciples, to change us. He does it so that we will experience a change in ourselves, so that we will discover that reservoir of hope, 
that endless supply of peace and courage, that grace that enables us to keep making these voyages. It enables us to open wide our hearts to any and all who seek Christ, to all who are marginalized, to all whose stories we need to hear in order for us to recognize and more fully participate in the spread of God's reign of justice and peace so that we might one day live together with all our sisters and brothers in unity. Amen. At this time, I invite you to join with me in singing our hymn of the day. It's number 767. Lord, take my hand and lead me. Come before the triune God in prayer. Holy God, you gather your people from east and west, north and south. We pray for the mission of the church throughout the world, that your steadfast love may be made known to all peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You laid the foundations of the earth, and the waters are the womb of creation. The morning stars sing your name, and all creation shouts for joy. We pray for your blessed creation, that it may continue to flourish and magnify your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You keep watch over all nations. We pray for countries experiencing violence, hunger, and unrest. Guide worldwide and local community organizations in their efforts to establish safety and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are close to the brokenhearted and near to those in distress who we now name in our hearts and in our minds.
We pray for those who are experiencing oppression. Liberate us from the systems and chains that bind us. Remove the barriers that separate us from one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You dwell with us in this faith community. We pray for our leaders and elders. Grant them knowledge and patience and kindness that through their leadership you may be exalted in this assembly and beyond. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your love endures in all situations. On this Father's Day, we pray for those who are fathers or wish to be fathers, for those with broken or strained relationships, for those who are missing their fathers, and for fathers who have lost children. Bless and strengthen them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. I'd just like to take a moment to thank you for your continued support of our ministries here at St. Matthew's. Your offerings mean the world to us. And again, we thank you. I invite you to join with me in singing our offertory hymn. It's number 686. We give thee but thine own, and we'll be singing verse 1. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O oh Lord, from thee. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. At this time, I invite you at home, watching on television or online, to commune with us, wherever you may be. At this time, please uncover the bread and wine or juice that you will be using for the sacrament. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. (laughs) 
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In compassion for your world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in this, his Holy Supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus gathered together as the family of God by the Holy Spirit, let us pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome to come to the Lord's table here at St. Matthew's to receive the true presence of Christ in bread and wine for the forgiveness of sin. For where sin is forgiven, there is salvation and new life in Jesus Christ. However, as this is a sacrament of love and thanksgiving, the offer of these gifts to all is not a command that all must receive them, but rather an invitation to partake of what Christ has already freely given. Christ is at the table with more than enough for all. Come, thanks be to God. Lamb of God, you bear the sin of all the world away. You suffer death, our lives to save. Have mercy now, we pray. O Lamb of God, you bear the sin of all the world away. Set us free from guilt and grave. Have mercy now, we pray. O Lamb of God, you bear the sin of all the world away. Eternal peace with God you made. Give us your peace, we pray. Today, when I say the words, body of Christ given for you, and blood of Christ shed for you, I ask that you respond to each by saying, Amen. At this time, I direct you to the bread and wine or grape juice that you have before you. Please take the piece of bread and hear these words. Body of Christ given for you. Now, take the cup of wine or grape juice that you have prepared and hear these words. The blood of Christ shed for you. And now I will have these words 
spoken to me so that I too may receive the sacrament. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. I invite you at this time to join with me in singing our distribution hymn. It's number 785, When Peace Like a River. We'll be singing verses 1, 3, and 4. the table blessing. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus, the Christ of God, strengthen and preserve you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Hear now our song of blessing. Go now in peace. Each hour of every day 
though now in faith, steadfast, strong, and true. A few announcements uh, this morning. Um, I'm going to uh, be singing happy birthday and happy anniversary and may the good Lord bless you. But before I do that, I want to wish a very happy 65th wedding anniversary to Gary and Carol Ron. Congratulations to you both. They will be celebrating on June 22nd. So let us sing happy birthday and then happy anniversary. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary to you. May the good Lord bless you, may the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord, may the good Lord, may the good Lord bless you. I also want to take this opportunity to wish all of our fathers out there, a very happy Father's Day. And uh, to one particular uh, father, in, in my case, um, Dad, I just want to wish you a, a very special day uh, today. I hope it's a good one. I invite you at this time to join with me in singing our sending song. It's number 763, My Life Flows On in Endless Song. My life flows on in endless song Above earth's lamentation I catch the sweet though far off hymn That hails a new creation No storm can shake by in most calm, while to that rock I'm clinging, since Christ is the Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear that music ringing. It finds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm. While to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is the Lord of heaven and earth. How can I keep from singing? What though my joys and comforts die, the Lord my Savior liveth. What though the darkness gather round, sings in the night he giveth. 
No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging, since Christ is the Lord of heaven and earth. How can I keep from singing? The peace of Christ makes fresh my heart, a fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I am His. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is the Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Now I invite you to share a sign of Christ's love and peace with one another. Be well. Amen. Oh,